How's it going, everyone? It has been a long time since we've been here together. Recently, I've just been uploading parse videos, but I've gotten quite a few questions on how to parse on Magcro and all the different moving pieces of it, so I decided to make a video on it to try to help explain exactly how it works and how to maximize your parse this patch. This is for Markarth patch specifically. If you are just here for the parses and you don't care about the instructional, there are timestamps in the description below. Feel free to check those out to see the parses specifically. Other than that, my name in game is at RevelX, and let's go ahead and get this party started. All right, first thing I wanna go over is the different add-ons I use while parsing. This is one of the most frequent questions I receive. Very first add-on I use is Light Attack Helper. That is the white text around my feet in this picture simply telling me how many light attacks per second I am at mid parse and this helps me keep track of if I need to cast faster if I've missed light attacks etc next add-on I use is bandits user interface this is a graphical add-on more than anything else it changes the way the UI looks and has some other useful features completely optional Next one I use is combat metrics. That is the black bar at the bottom of the screen. It is a very detailed damage tracking add-on. Highly recommend. We'll get into more detail on that later in the video. Next add-on I use is debuff me. That is the white letter one, number one, excuse me, at the center of the screen. It's simply telling me what stage of the off balance cycle we're in. Doesn't really affect parsing too much, uh, but it's good information. So optional. Next add-on I use is Show Global Cooldown. This is a GCD timer. There are tons of different GCD timers out there. Combat Metronome, for example, is a popular one. Uh, it just helps me track the global cooldown. Again, optional, not required. I'll showcase that real quick for you. So in the actual game, I'm going to cast Skull a few times, and you'll see when I cast Skull that there is a rotating clockwise cooldown each time I cast it. Just helps me keep track of when the global cooldown becomes available again. So there you go, that's what that looks like. Moving back to the different add-ons. The next add-on I use is Action Duration Reminder. This is to add a skill timer on top of my skills. So going back to the game real quick. You'll notice when I cast wall here, there's a 10 second timer on it to let me know how long I have until it runs out. That is what this add-on is doing, is just giving me that timer so I'm able to know when my skills finish. All right, and that is the extent of the add-ons that I use while parsing. Obviously, there are a ton of other add-ons for content-specific purposes and stuff, but for my parsing specifically, that is what I use. Moving on to the next topic. Uh, how to use orbs correctly. So one of the unique things about magcro parsing is their ability to sustain orbs mid-parse. Now orbs is a creature all of its own and it does require special considerations in order to maximize its damage. The very first point is you need to make sure when you cast orb it's giving you 16 ticks. Okay, a lot of people mess this up. If you're getting less than 16 ticks, you're wasting free damage. So let's jump into the game real quick and take a look at this. All right, so here we are in the game at a target dummy. Now, you have to be close enough to get trapped to register, right? But you also want to get a full 16 ticks, so you need to be at the farthest possible point away from the dummy where trap still registers, and that will allow you to get 16 ticks. So we're going to test it real quick. I'm going to drop trap right here, and then I'm going to cast an orb. Now, you notice my trap does go off, so I am close enough for my trap to register. Now we're just going to wait until the end of combat so I can show you exactly how many ticks I got off of that orb. One of the things that you do not need to do that is optional is put the dummy on its side. You're able to get 16 ticks regardless whether you face the dummy's front, face the dummy's back, or face the dummy's side. Just waiting for this combat to time out so we can take a look here. There we go. So let's take a look at this. All right. Right off the bat, you see in this combat metrics, there is 16 hits of orb and barb trap did register. So that's what you're looking for each time you cast orb, is that you're at the right distance to get all 16 ticks. Now, jumping right back into the slideshow. Point number two, 16 ticks 
is the equivalent of 7.5 seconds of damage, okay? It ticks every half a second and ticks once at the beginning. So once at the beginning plus 15 ticks every half a second puts you at 70.5 seconds when the damage ends. All right, so the last 2.5 seconds of orb does not do any damage. That's going to be important to remember when we get to the dynamic rotation. For now, we're going to move on. Final point. Actually, this is what I just said. Best up time for orb is going to be casting it at eight seconds. Again, not something we're gonna really see in the static rotation, but in the dynamic rotation, this is gonna be an important factor. So that's how to use orb when you're parsing. Let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. All right, guys, we finally made it. We made it to the juicy details of how to do a rotation. Now, what we're talking about right here is a static rotation, okay? The benefit of a static rotation is you're hitting the exact same skills over and over and over. What this means is there's not a whole lot of thought process on what skill you need to hit next, and instead, you're able to focus on perfecting your light attack weaving and perfecting your up times, all right? So jumping right in to this static rotation, you're going to start off with this five skill pre-buff okay now channeled excel you're going to see this pre-buff on both the static and dynamic ones basically all you do to apply that we'll jump into the game real quick and take a look uh, you use some sort of add-on to allow you to swap the skills or you manually swap it whatever you prefer i'm using an add-on called alpha gear to do it so you'll see here i swap into channeled excel i hit it and then i swap back out back to trap okay so that's all i'm talking about when i talk about channeled excel right there moving back to the rotation you then cast these four remaining skills as a pre-buff. Again, pre-buff means the damage has not started, okay? You have not actually hit the target yet. These are all delayed damage skills. The very next skill you cast after these five skills, that will start the actual parse. So let's jump into that, all right? Here's the actual opening sequence. This is when you start light attacking, okay? At the very beginning of the very first skill in this opening category is when your first light attack needs to hit, and then for the rest of the parse, there needs to be a light attack between every single skill. So taking a look at this, it's just six simple skills. Not really a whole lot to talk about here. We're going to move into the meat of the rotation now. All right, this is the 20 skill layout that you're going to be hitting over and over and over for the rest of the parse. Nice and simple, just these 20 skills. The one thing I would note when you're doing this rotation or the dynamic rotation is that Boneyard and Rune both have a circle induction when you cast them, right? So that means it's a lot easier to miss light attacks or to delay your cast time around them. So do pay special attention to perfecting that timing. Yeah, not a whole lot to talk about here. It's pretty straightforward. Just hit those skills in that order. Moving on, we're reaching execute, right? We're feeling good. We have an amazing parse so far. We get to about 700K on dummy health. And this is when you really want to start thinking about cashing out all those dots you have active and just spamming the dummy down into the ground. So 700K is about when I start this. It kind of depends on the situation. You do need orb. Uh, recently refreshed so if orb is about to fall off you can always recast orb before you start this but yeah 700k here we go you're just hitting blast bones rune wall blast bones wall wall you're just using spammables just to burn the dummy into the ground if the dummy is still alive after this six casts that is fine just cast another wall or two to really send it home all right that's as simple as it is for execute very very easy last topic we're going to talk about is the ult order that you're going to be using or right you're going to be using elemental rage at the start in that pre-buff section like we already talked about then you're going to cast two shooting stars followed by a final elemental rage and that does need to be an execute all right so that's the ult order if you're casting substantially slower you can probably fit another shooting star in but assuming you're casting at almost max speed at almost max damage you're going to have enough space for four ults and that is the most optimized way you can cast them that's all I got for static rotation. Pretty straightforward. Like I said, really, really recommend if you need to work on optimizing your speeds. Moving on, we're going to actually take a look at the static rotation. So up next, you're going to be able to see the 106,800 static rotation parse that I did. Here it is. Need 
laid his name up in lights He just wants to be heard Whether it's the beat of the mic He feels so unlike everybody else alone In spite of the fact that some people still think that they know him But fuck him, he knows the code It's not about the salary It's all about reality and making some noise Making a story, making sure his click stays up That means when he puts it down, talks picking it up Let's go Who the hell is he anyway? He never really talks much Never concerned with status But still even him starstruck Humble through opportunities given despite the fact that many misjudge him cause he makes a living from writing raps Put it together himself, that a picture connects Never asking for someone's help, or to get some respect He's only focused on what he wrote, his will is beyond reach And now it all unfolds, the skill of an artist This is 20% skill, 80% fear, be 100% clear Cause Ryu was ill, who would've thought he'd be the one that set the West in flames And I heard him wreck it with the crystal method, name of the game Came back, dropped mega death, took him to church I like bleach, man, Ryu had the stupidest verses, dude, is the truth Now everybody giving them guest spots And stocks through the roof I heard you fucking with that guy This is 10% luck, 20% skill 15% concentrated power of will 5% pleasure, 50% pain And 100% reason to remember the name They call him Ryu, he's sick and he's spitting fire And Mike got him out the dryer, he's hot Found him in Fort Minor with top But a fucking is porcupine, he's a prick, he's a cop The tight women wanna be with him Rappers hope he gets shot Eight years in the making, patiently waiting to blow Now the record with your notice taking over the globe He's got a partner in crime, this shit is equally dope You won't believe the kind of shit that comes out of this kid's throat top He's not your everyday on the block He knows how to work with wood he's got Making his way to the top He often gets a comment on his name People keep asking him was it Giving that birth that doesn't stand for an act But him no, he's living proof Put him rock in the booth He'll get you wasn't quicker than a shot of vodka with juice Juice. Him and his crew are known around as one of the best Dedicated to what they do and give 100% Forget Mike, nobody really knows how or why He works so hard, it seems like he's never got time Because he writes every note, he writes every line and I've seen him at work when that light goes on in his mind It's like a design is written in his head every time Before he even touches a key or speaks in a rhyme And those motherfuckers he runs with the kids that he signed Ridiculous, without even trying, how do they do it? This is 10% luck, 20% skill 15% concentrated power of will 5% pleasure, 50% pain And 100% reason to remember the name This is 10% luck, 20% skill 15% All right, guys, moving right along. Now we're going to talk about dynamic rotations, all right? Dynamic rotations do take a lot more effort than static because it requires you to actively think about what skill you're going to be hitting next as well as plan a few skills in advance. Do not really recommend this if you're still trying to work on your speed, okay? I would recommend only switching to dynamic after your speed is good. On that note, let's go ahead and jump right in. The main advantage of Dynamic is it has a higher damage cap, okay? It's about 1k, give or take, higher damage cap than the static variety because you can get better uptimes on important skills like Orb. As you'll see in my parse that's going to be after this, I was about 800 damage higher in the Dynamic versus the static. So let's talk about it. Very first thing is the pre-buff. Now this pre-buff is the exact same thing you see for static. You're just going to hit that channeled excel, then you're going to swap into trap, then you're going to cast these next four skills again with no light attacks. Next up, we're going to jump into the actual meat of the rotation. There is no set order for you to cast here. This is a priority ranking, okay? So each time you have a GCD available, you need to go through this priority ranking in your head to make sure you choose the right skills. The most essential tier in this priority list is orb every eight seconds all right as we talked about earlier when we were discussing orb to maximize damage you do need that every eight second cast of orb the second essential item is blast bones every third cast now there's one time where this is not essential and that is when orb and blast bones both come off cooldown at the same time all right this will happen in your parse when orb and blast bones both come off at the same time you cast orb first delay blast bones by one so you orb blast bones if they both come off at the same cooldown. Now, 
Other than that, it's absolutely essential you cast every third cast. Moving on. High priority, okay? After you take care of the essential category, this is what demands your attention. You need to make sure you keep almost perfect uptime on wall, yard, archer, and trap for that time percent minor force. Again, you don't need to start applying trap until the channeled excel uh, beginning buff wears off, of course. But yes, high, high priority. You really, really need to keep amazing uptimes on those for a good parse. Moving on, we have medium priority. Okay, medium priority basically means after you've taken care of the essential, after you've taken care of the high, now you need to take care of medium, all right? So you hit siphon. If everything else above it is already taken care of, siphon is the next thing you hit. Low priority. If everything above low priority is hit, so siphon plus all the other stuff, next you'd cast degen. And then finally, if you're keeping uptime already on everything from low to essential, it's all ticking already. Next, that is when you hit a spammable. Now you have two different spammable options here, okay? Both rune and wall of elements have a direct damage portion, unstable wall specifically, of course. Now rune is better single target damage if you can successfully cast it with that induction without messing up your parse, right? Because it applies in power uh, as well as just having a higher tooltip damage uh, spammable portion than wall wall obviously is a much wider aoe so in aoe situations maybe a wall spammable would be better suited uh, the other thing is rune does take two seconds to arm so you can't cast rune rune back to back or one of the runes won't go off so in that case if you have to cast two spammables back to back you would do rune wall um, ideally so that's the deal with that moving on when you reach execute, it's actually the same as static in this regard. When you reach execute about that 700k mark, you really want to roll into the 700k mark with your orb freshly reapplied with quite a few seconds left on wall and yard and archer and trap. Uh, the medium and low is optional. So you're in at 700k and you just want to drive the dummy into the ground. You're going to finish off the rotation, cashing out on all those spammable, or excuse me, all those dots you have active by finishing it off with a spammable rotation. As you see here, blast bones, rune, wall, blast bones, wall, wall. Uh, if the dummy's still alive after these six, you can cast another wall or two to finish it off. Same exact thing that you see with static, just finishing off strong. Finally, ult order. This is the exact same ult order that you see over in the static section. It is rage that you pre-buff as well as two shooting stars mid parse followed by a final elemental rage that you do want to cast in execute. Not a whole lot more to talk about there. Uh, dynamic is all about prioritization, okay? You have to be casting fast and on top of that, you need to be constantly looking ahead to the next skill or next two skills, running through that priority list in your head, trying to figure out which is the best cast to make, starting with essential, then high, then medium, then low, then spammable, etc. So that's how you do it. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this looks in an actual parse. I'm going to do my 107.6k dynamic macro parse, and here it is. So you better not miss And we only get stronger With everything I carry up on my back You should paint it up with a target Why would you dare me to do it again? Come get your spoiler
All right, this topic's going to be short and sweet. It's basically the equipment I use. If you watch the parses, you can already see the equipment used at the end of the parse. Uh, but just in case, here is the equipment. Again, Sororia front barred. You have the Mother Sorrow on the body, the Zahn on the head and shoulders, and Maelstrom Inferno staff at the back. You do want Sororia front barred here, not Mother Sorrow, because the Sororia damage uh, spell power circle does carry over while you're on your back bar however mother sorrow bonus does not so you will get more damage from the sororia staff front bard that's about it for the gear um i would just say that bloodthirsty is the best option of course moving on to the next slide all right so number one most asked question that i get how do i increase my damage so let's talk about it Static versus dynamic rotation is where we're going to start. So as I already mentioned earlier on in the video, static rotation offers a massive benefit compared to dynamic when you're learning to parse. Static means you're hitting the exact same skills over and over. It takes out the factor of having to figure out what skill to cast next and instead allows you to focus really hard on your rotation speed as well as light attack weaving. Okay, so if you're first learning, I highly recommend starting with the static and not trying the dynamic rotation and shifting to that until after you are very, very good with your speed and your light attack weaving already because dynamic is just going to add another layer of complexity moving on another question i get i copied everything that you said rev and i'm still low what is the best way to increase my dps all right so here's the deal guys if you've copied the gear that i have in this video exactly and you're doing the rotation that i have in this video exactly to a t really the only difference then is the speed that you're casting at, okay? Your light attacks and your speed. If you're doing a static rotation hitting the exact same skills, that is the biggest difference, is the speed. So let's talk about that. Your next question is then, how do I speed up my rotation? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's transition to the next slide here and talk about specifically how to increase rotation speed because this is the single biggest dps increase that most players are able to get in the game is by doing the rotation and their light attacks faster so most important thing that i look at or at least the most useful tool for me when i'm trying to figure out my rotation speed is this screen right here now if you're not familiar with this screen uh, basically, this is part of the CMX information screen, okay? This is the top left corner of it. So let's talk through what exactly this screen is showing us, all right? 
Very first thing I want to draw your attention to here in the bottom left corner, you have the weaving average. All right. Basically what that number means is how much of a delay there is between each GCD. How much time are you losing every single cast? What this is telling me is I am losing 36 milliseconds every single cast. So if I wanted to do more damage, I would have to be faster than 36 milliseconds on this parse. Uh, the total is just telling you collectively 36 milliseconds each cast means there was a total of 6.8 seconds lost. Now, I pay a lot of attention to this. I recommend taking the time to go to the information panel in your CMX when you do a parse and look at that weaving average. See how much time you've lost. It surprises a lot of people. Maybe it's 100 some milliseconds. Maybe it's 200 some milliseconds. There's big room for improvement there, right? Getting that rotation faster. Uh, next thing to look at is this weave column uh, next to the skills. What this is telling you is how much time between the end of the global cooldown and when you cast the skill there is. So what this is telling me is on average, my stalking blast bones, there's a 20 millisecond gap between when global cooldown becomes uh, be, reaches its end and when I cast my blast bone. So there's 20 milliseconds that I could improve on there. Now my boneyard, once again, as I mentioned earlier, boneyard and rune have that induction. So these are probably going to be the ones that take the most time. As you see here, uh, it's, it's taking me 80 milliseconds between the end of the global cooldown and when I cast the skill. So there's room for improvement there. So look at that on each of your skills, figure out where you're losing the most time uh, in your weave Next category I wanna draw your attention to is the miss column. The miss column is just telling you where you missed your light attacks, right? So when I was casting unstable wall of fire, over here you see I missed one light attack. So I missed one light attack in this, in this uh, rotation parse. And the, what I'm pulling from specifically here is the static rotation screenshot, by the way, for anyone wondering. Highly, highly recommend checking this out. It lets you know how fast you're casting, and how much room for improvement you have. I do not have a one-size-fits-all, uh, one-trick wonder sort of explanation for how to increase speed. It really takes a lot of dedicated effort, lots of practice with light attacking and skill casting, and uh, just being very aware of the stats on each parse like we just talked about right here. That's the best advice I have for you and how to increase your rotation speed. Moving on. Well... We finally made it, guys. It's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. If you watch this all the way through, I do very much appreciate you. Uh, I do co-lead a guild on the NA server called Transcending Apotheosis, so if you're ever looking for a guild, feel free to join. I'll probably have a link to the Discord in the description below. Also, feel free to send spell power pots my way if you ever want to. It takes a lot of pots to make these videos possible. Uh, go through over a thousand a week, to be honest. But uh, yeah, hopefully this video was very helpful to you. These are a lot of tips and tricks that I put together uh, through my parsing. Uh, also, special thank you to a gentleman that brought static rotation to my attention and has done a lot of theory crafting with me since then. That name is ITZ Seb S E B X. I'll have a description, or excuse me, a link for him in the description below. So go ahead and check out his channel. He was very, very helpful figuring out the static rotation part of things. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing rest of your day, and thank you for joining me.